Hello, my name is Terrence Barkin. I'm the Executive Director of the Graphene Council. This presentation is going to talk about the future of graphene commercialization. Where is the market today and where is it going? The Graphene Council is the largest community in the world for graphene professionals, including academic researchers through the value chain to end users of graphene materials and value-added products. We are members of the ISO, ANSI, and IEC Standards Development Working Groups, we produce original information and market research, and we work diligently to help educate end-user markets to adopt and commercialize graphene materials. From a commercial perspective, graphene is really considered to be a family of 2D materials based on monolayers of carbon. Basically, you can divide the graphene market into two segments. Bulk graphene, such as graphene nanoplatelets, graphene oxide, and such, and CVD or continuous thin film produced graphene monolayer or otherwise referred to as pristine graphene. So if we look from a commercial perspective, as I mentioned, there's a wide range of materials that are referred to as graphene from single monolayer epitaxial graphene through to multiple layers of carbon that exceed the ISO definition of graphene of 10 layers. And at the end of the day, from a commercial perspective, the end user really doesn't matter what we call this material. What they are concerned about is what value add we bring and what enhancements can we bring by using what we refer, refer to as graphene materials. So in addition to the number of layers, there are many other ways of characterizing or describing this material, such as graphene oxide, reduced graphene oxide, Graphene materials can be in the form of a dry powder, paste, in solution. We can obtain them as graphene nanoplatelets. And then, of course, we have functionalization of the material, which gives another dimension. If we look at the pricing, there are very few market price signals for graphene. And graphene producers are selecting to position their material in an extremely broad range of price levels because a lot of the material has been sold for research in very small quantities, we get some incredibly high per pound or per kilo or per square meter or per square centimeter pricing, um, making it um, quite difficult to commercialize because the cost is prohibitive if you scale that up. There's also been tremendous confusion about when we talk about quality of graphene and many suppliers will talk about their material being of a higher, so to say, quality. The challenge with graphene materials is, of course, that one material that is quite defective or inappropriate for one application may be perfect for another. Some of the graphene defects of the material actually improve the efficacy of the material for other applications. And at the moment, there is no standard reference material for graphene for us to compare to. In addition, uh, the load factors that can be used when adding graphene to a host matrix material can be extremely low making the actual cost of the material much less of a factor. What is much more important for the commercialization of this material is to be able to find a trusted supplier who knows how to handle the material, can produce it in industrial quantities on a consistent batch-to-batch -batch basis, and can help the end user understand how to disperse and use the material properly so that they get the desired outcomes. Today, there are more than 40 vertical markets that we have identified where graphene can have a significant impact. The largest of these at the moment are composites, batteries, plastics, sensors, coatings, thermal management products, and conductive inks. And the major industries that have an interest in graphene at the moment are automotive, aerospace, sporting goods, the defense industry, and construction. In 2018, about 600 tons of actual material was sold at a value of around $65 million. And we say approximate because uh, exact figures are not disclosed by producers and pricing is also not disclosed by producers. The global capacity for production at the moment is about 6,000 tons or roughly 10 times the current demand. So we have a massive oversupply or overcapacity issue. And frankly, that's going to continue in that vein as additional capacity is brought online um, aggressively in 2019. There are about 250 companies plus that claim to produce graphene, and there's another one every single day that's formed, spin-outs from universities or 
research labs or internally from companies. And this does not even include uh, hundreds of companies that are in the territory of China that claim to be making graphene. If we look at the available market reports and we take a consensus of those, they're looking at $300 million as the value of the graphene market in 2027. So from a commercial perspective, still not a very massive market. At the Graphene Council, we think that this might be grossly underestimating what the actual market is based on the pull through from the commercial partners that we work with. Some examples of what the potential is for graphene, and it is quite significant. If you look specifically at marine coatings, you're looking at a million tons of product that is used annually. And if graphene is used to enhance that application and just by 0.5% by weight, that translates into 5,000 tons of graphene, which is almost the entire current production capacity. If we look at polymers specifically for mechanical applications, there's 250 million tons of product produced every year and adding graphene at just 1% by weight brings us to 2.5 million tons of graphene materials for this one application segment. And so if we see that commercial pull through does come in any of these, let alone the 40 that we've identified, we are nowhere near prepared to meet the commercial demand. Now some actual examples that are in the marketplace. One very high profile announcement was made when Ford uh, publicized that they're using graphene enhanced polyurethane foams in the engine compartments of their production vehicles, namely the Ford F-150 and the Mustang, their two highest selling models. These products are in the market, in the public today. And what they achieved there was a very high reduction in noise and vibration as a byproduct of their intended application, which was heat transfer properties which they improved by 30% using less than 1% by weight graphene in polyurethane foam. Another high profile product is a golf ball. Now this may sound gimmicky, but this works. The Callaway Golf Company has incorporated graphene into a production uh, product, into a consumer product. And the graphene is used not only on the outer coating of the ball, but also for the inner core for different purposes. And this is a product that they will now actually go into their second generation uh, coming out this year. Other applications include sports equipment, batteries, and LED packaging for thermal transfer. These are a few products, and this is just from one company, XG Sciences, in the United States. In fact, they've made an announcement this week that they've entered into a joint venture agreement with Sinochem Plastics, where their material will be used and sold in China, and where they're targeting thermal plastic materials for the automotive, industrial, and consumer markets. Another product comes from a company called Entherma, which actually makes carbon nanotubes, unzips them to make graphene nano ribbons, and then modifies them further to make graphene nano platelets. The product that they've produced is a graphene enhanced standard motor oil, which improves lubrication and their product now has been shelf stable for more than a year where the graphene is not aggregated out or settled. Another application from yet another company called Nano Explore, which is taking a very different approach to the graphene market by focusing on extremely high volume and driving price down. One of the products that they have is called Graphene Black, which is a six to 10 layer carbon nanoplatelet material made from graphite feedstock. And their product is being used to enhance the recyclability of recycled plastics. Recycled plastics can only be recycled so many times before they're unusable. And by adding a small amount of graphene nanoplatelets to the recycled material, they can extend the number of times that the material can be recycled and it also results in a higher quality plastic product which adds value for the recycling business. As we see here on the table on the right, by adding just 1% of graphene black product to the recycled polyethylene materials, they're able to recycle the material on a consistent basis with consistent outcomes in terms of quality. Another application they have is for barrier properties and coatings. In this case is to protect metal tubes 
from corrosion. If we look at some CVD applications, and this is where some exciting developments are actually moving faster than one would have expected just a year or two ago. The company is expecting significant growth in the biosensing, wearables, DNA, drug discovery, glucose monitoring, food allergen monitoring, etc. These sensing applications will make a dramatic impact on the quality of life and safety for the population. In our observation over the past six years, we've seen some major obstacles and challenges for the adoption of graphene by users. First of all, the perception is that graphene is just too expensive to work with, and it discourages companies from experimenting with it or considering it as a potential material. There's a tremendous lack of awareness of understanding that graphene is a family of materials and which materials are best suited for which purpose. They know very little about graphene and all the material is simply labeled graphene without understanding the intricacies of the different types and morphologies of the material that are available. Companies also like to avoid risk and they don't want to bring an unproven material into their production process. As has been said, nobody wants to be first to be first. They want to be first to be second and look to other companies taking that initial risk. There's a gross misunderstanding of the benefits graphene can provide to particular products and applications. All of the hype around pristine graphene's characteristics of being the strongest material known, the highest mobility and electrical conductivity, the highest thermal transfer rates, etc., have set unmeetable expectations for much of the material. And also we see that because there are so many producers with such a confusing array of claims around their material, it's incredibly difficult for end users to know who is a reputable source of graphene materials on an industrial scale. There are many producers of material, but not at an industrial scale. From the producer side of the equation, there are other challenges. To be a successful graphene producer, in our opinion, of course you need to have the science regarding production methodology and the ability to tune this material to meet customer requirements. But there's an additional challenge to do this at an industrial scale, and many companies st stumble at this point in getting from lab scale production up to commercial scale production. Another major obstacle we feel is the need to actually grow your own customers or to develop your own customers. Graphene is not the kind of material you can just sell somebody a bucket of graphene, send them on their way, and expect that they'll know how to use it. Successful graphene companies work with their customers to develop the end applications and make sure that the material is used appropriately, especially concerning dispersion technologies and getting the load factors correct and tuning the material for the particular application to get the desired performance improvements. Another stumbling block for many graphene companies is that they simply do not invest in the sales side. They have great scientists, they know how to produce the material, but they really do not know how to go to market and they don't invest enough to develop the customers that we mentioned they need to actually develop. Because graphene is not an existing market, it's not as if you can just become a producer and then sell into an existing market. You have to develop your customers and that requires a sales force that understands how to develop those customers. And lastly, because there are no standards regarding reference material and performance of the material, there's confusion for buyers or it becomes a very cumbersome process where they have to do trial and error on their own to figure out if the material is suitable for their application. So that's our overview of the market. There are challenges, of course, but we see this market growing rapidly over the next two years, and we've already seen tremendous progress. In the six years since the Graphene Council has been founded, we've gone from a period of whether or not companies would be able to produce this material on an industrial scale with the sufficient quality needed to become commercially adopted. For the most part, companies have passed that hurdle. And the next part is really focused on educating the end user markets to understand how to use graphene, get over the perception that it's prohibitively expensive, and to teach them how to use the material and then demonstrate these use cases to encourage other companies to adopt this material on a large scale. We're very bullish on the market for graphene. We think it will continue to develop rapidly and the Graphene Council is here working especially focused on end user communities to help educate them and introduce them to the graphene material and then connect them with reliable producer partners 
to help stimulate the commercialization of this material so that it takes place in a period of a few years as opposed to a few decades. I hope this was interesting for you and if you have any questions please reach out and contact us at the Graphene Council as the global community for graphene professionals our objective is to help you connect with colleagues and help advance this material. Thank you.